Multi-billion dollar projects are under construction in Ghana, reshaping the face of the country, guaranteeing citizens, traders, and investors a promising future. Without further ado, here are the 15 gigantic projects transforming Ghana. Do not forget sharing with us what you think of these projects on the comments section. Number 15, Tamale International Airport. Ghana Civil Aviation Authority has initiated an airport modernization and development project to transform and develop an international airport in Tamale City in northern Ghana. The project is set to increase domestic aviation activities and make Tamale the gateway for air traffic movement within and out of the region. The scope work includes construction of a 5,000 square meters airport terminal, a 1,000 square meters Haji facility for pilgrims, a 5 kilometers network of roads, land side and air side infrastructure adapted to the terminal size, plus water, power and sewage infrastructure to support the airport's daily activities. The new terminal has the capacity to handle 400,000 passengers per annum, and it encompasses two boarding gates, four self-service check-ins kiosks, eight check-in desks, airlines office spaces, and commercial retail avenues. Number 14, Pokwa's Interchange. Pokwa's Interchange is a four-tier interchange situated at Pokwa's Junction. The first tier links Accra to Nsawam. It is the existing Accra Kumasi Highway. The third tier connects Kumasi to Pokwa's ACP. The middle tier can be used to access Iwashi, Pokwa's, Accra, and Nsawam. Tra the interchange is the second four tier interchange in Africa after the Ebkluti interchange in Durban, South Africa. Some of the benefits that come with the project are, increased employment opportunities for residents, improved mobility on the highway, decrease in road accidents, improved business opportunities for local businesses, and reduction in vehicle operating cost as a result of reduced travel times. The total cost of the project is $94.8 million, funded by the African Development Bank and the Government of Ghana. Number 13. Abert Sebi Lamptey Interchange. So as to alleviate traffic congestion, the government of Ghana is developing a new interchange in the arterial road network in phases. It is expected to reduce traffic congestion and control flooding on the existing roads, through upgrading of the traffic circle, development of flyovers and a drainage system, allowing seamless traffic flow on the existing roads in all weather conditions. The first phase of the project was complete in 2020, and it involved construction of a viaduct with a total length of 550 meters, developed by a Spanish contractor QGMI construction company. Phase 2 of the project is currently under construction. A city development. So as to create a seamless live-work-play environment, Ghana is developing a world-class master-planned city in Accra. Apolonia City is a well-planned city that seats in a natural environment, coupled with the highest standards of infrastructure. Situated on 2,325 acres of land, the $250 million city has 25,000 housing units, a 120-acre central business district, a 200-acre light industry, over 300 acres of public parks and gardens. The city has residential homes that can accommodate up to 100,000 people, and once fully complete it is expected to receive a minimum of 20,000 visitors a day. The $250 million real estate project is being developed by Rendeva, a property developer based in Kenya with operations across Africa. Number 11, Kumasi International Airport Expansion Project. In 2013, the government of Ghana embarked a phased development of the Kumasi Airport to provide the requisite infrastructure for safe domestic and international operations, as to ensure safety and comfort for passengers, whilst ensuring Ghana had a fully functioning international airport along with Kotoka International Airport. 
Phase 1 of the project was complete in 2014 and it involved the rehabilitation of the defective runway, installation of airfield lights, and aeronautical ground lights on the runway to facilitate night operations at the airport. Phase 2 of the project began in 2016, and it involves the construction of a two-story modern terminal of 7,000 square meters of space based with a capacity to handle 1.5 million passengers per annum, parking areas and a ring road around the airport. The airport's terminals also have spaces like VIP lounges, restaurants, commercial areas, three boarding gates, a central screening system for passengers, a standard baggage handling system, and offices for the airline companies. In addition to this, the project also sees the expansion of the runway from 1981 meters to 2300 meters, extension of the terminal building, a fire station, fire access routes, an air control tower, car park, access roads, aprons, and an air side service road. The whole project is expected to cost over $300 million. Number 10. Ghana Burkina Faso Railway Line Trains could soon be running from landlocked Burkina Faso to the Atlantic ports of Ghana, following the construction of a $750 million railway line. Traditionally Burkina Faso and its equally landlocked neighbors, Mali and Niger, usually use road and rail links to the port of Abidjan in Ivory Coast for most of their external trade. Ghana seeks to change that in Burkina Faso with the construction of the new railway line. The 1,252 km railway line linking the two countries starts in Ghana's port of Tema, to Burkina Faso's capital Ouagadougou. The railway line is expected to reduce the pressure of rapidly growing freight traffic off Ghana's roads, and increase trade volume between the two West African nations. Number 9, Petronia City Petronia City is a proposed 2,000-acre city development project that aims to provide the first fully integrated business hub for West Africa's oil, gas and mining industries. The proposed development is being undertaken by Wonder World Estates and the Petronia City. Petronia City was created primarily to address the infrastructure gap in the western region following the 2007 oil discovery, and subsequent increase in social and economic activity in the region. Coming at a cost of $1 billion, the city will have the following facilities, a world-class water system, sewage treatment system, parking and bus terminal, as well as a master-planned road network, data telecom networks, shopping malls schools and clinics, plus an energy city, health city and an industrial hub. Number 8, Marine Drive Accra. The Marine Drive project is a public-private partnership project expected to transform the beachfront stretch from the OSU Christiansburg Castle, to the Arts Center, into a vibrant business and commercial enclave, transforming the Accra city skyline. According to OJ Associates' plan, the project introduces a new waterfront promenade that reimagines the coast as a vibrant leisure and recreation space. The promenade also extends across the site, creating a seamless link between the capital city's most celebrated landmarks and unlocking access to the city's beachfront at the heart of the promenade. A new centerpiece, public park honoring the forefathers of Ghanaian independence is set to be developed, covering an area of over 240 acres. The $1.2 billion project is expected to transform Accra into a business, leisure, cultural and an ecotourism hotspot. Number 7, Ghana International Trade Fair Center. The government of Ghana has allocated $2 billion for the redevelopment of the Ghana International Trade Fair Center. Constructed in phases, the first phase sees construction of a convention center with the capacity to hold 12,000 people and exhibition halls, along with other facilities for accommodation and shopping such as luxury hotels and high-end malls. 
Construction of other residential, commercial developments and theme parks will be undertaken in Phase 2, and once fully complete, the project is expected to create 3,000 direct jobs and 7,000 indirect jobs, and also attract investments worth $150 million every year. Number 6, Accra Skytrain. Accra Skytrain is a mono, fully automated elevated light railway metro network for Greater Accra. The network has five routes, four of which are radial routes that originate at a new terminal at the Kwame and Krumah interchange and another route that loops around the city. The total track length of the train is 194 km, with the train's vehicle having the capacity to handle 10,000 people per hour. This project is being developed by Air Skytrain of South Africa at a cost of $2.6 billion fully funded by private investors. Number 5, Wakanda Smart City. Ghana is set to construct Wakanda City, so as to serve as pilgrimage for people of African descent. Inspired by the famous movie Black Panther, Ghana plans to make the far-fetched dream a reality, with the construction of an ultra-modern and technologically advanced city. Africa Diaspora Development Institute and local Ghanaian companies are set to fund the project, which will be constructed in five phases. It features a 1,000-bed teaching hospital, a university, five-star hotels manufacturing plants, parks, shopping centers, roads that support self-driving cars and 5G network infrastructure. Number 4, Ghana High Speed Rail. According to the Ghanaian prominent chemical engineer and inventor Thomas Mensah, negotiations are underway between a German company Siemens Mobility and local authorities for the construction of a high-speed railway. The Ghana High Speed Rail is a modern high-speed rail network with two lots, with the first lot stretching from Accra to Kumasi, a distance of about 248 kilometers, and the other stretching from Accra to Tamale, which is about 615 kilometers. The railway system is set to fetch over 1 million people per year, and it is expected to cost over $10 billion. Number 3, Cape Coast Green Smart City. Cape Coast Green City project aims to transform Cape Coast, a city, a fishing port, and the capital of Cape Coast Metropolitan District and Central Region in Southern Ghana, into a green, smart and sustainable city. The project entails the reconstruction and upgrading of all major road networks within the Cape Coast and those connecting to the city and several other infrastructure development projects, including the improvement of the educational cradle of the West African country into extensive and modern research, educational and technological development center, as well as the development of green energy, water systems and waste management models into integrated systems. The project is being developed by MAMDEV Ghana Limited in partnership with Steady X Limited, all from Ghana under the supervision of the Ghanaian government, and the diaspora community at a cost of over $10 billion. Number 2, Ghana Railway Redevelopment Project. The government of Ghana has outlined its ambitions for three rail projects worth a combined $12.9 billion as the country seeks to revamp the country's rail infrastructure. The projects are part of Ghana's wider infrastructure development bills, in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the African Union Agenda 2063, implemented in phases. First phase of the project involves the development of a light rail transit network comprising seven corridors in Kumasi, Ghana's second largest city, at a cost of $5.8 billion. Phase two of the project involves the construction of a 672 km railway line, which runs from Kumasi to Parga, while phase three involves the construction of a 550 km railway line set to connect Ghana's town of Aflao on the Togo border with Alubo on the Ivory Coast border. Number 1, Ghana Petroleum Hub. Since the discovery of oil and gas in commercial quantities in Ghana, the government of Ghana over time has been working feverishly to ensure that the country fully benefits from the blessings of what has been described as the black gold. 
The cabinet of the country has given approval for the establishment of the much-awaited petroleum hub in the western region to house all infrastructure projects in the petroleum industry. The hub will accommodate a refinery to process crude oil into various petroleum products and manufacture during plans for the processing of fertilizer from the byproducts of oil. The move by the government forms part of a major initiative to create more jobs in the oil and gas sector of the economy and provide investment opportunities for interested companies within and outside of Ghana. The hub, which is expected to cover an area of about 20,000 square kilometers, will be developed using the free zone concept, housing several facilities such as refineries, petrochemical plants, power plants, light industries, waste and water treatment facilities, storage facilities as well as business and residential centers. Ghana now has some of the best STEM schools in the world. And these are some students from one of Ghana's first girls STEM schools. I feel very blessed, I feel very privileged being in this school because this school has a lot of equipment. Everything about this school is just modern, just superb. Every, I don't even feel like going to the house anyways. I always want to be in this school to be able to like learn, like everything here is just good. Just don't feel like going home. My alma mater, which is University Junior High School, even though it was a big school, we're not having such kind of facilities or equipment, but being in this school, oh, it makes everything easier. For my school, if you're able to search for anything that is virtual or like anything that is virtual, meaning the ICT, the child has to use the phone, go around with it. But here, just can sit at the back and just view everything that is being shown from there. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, very excited. Oh I'm just excited to be in such a school. I'm just, it's mind blowing. <laughs> I'm lost of it. It's very amazing because whenever a teacher stands in front of you to teach, you understand it, even though the teacher wants to research something or do something he just stand here and he will just be pressing no stress nothing wow. just, yeah. <laughs> the teacher teacher us so, we, so that we'll be able to understand everything wow in fact the school is amazing we are all happy being here and we thank the Honorable Minister for building such a school for us. We always want to come to the lab to learn because it's very great when we are learning here because we, we find everything easy because of the avocado board. Wow. And the man behind these STEM schools and the STEM education in the country is this man called Dr. Yao Osei Educhun, who is the current Ghana's education minister. You know, Tony Blair just wrote a piece uh, talking about uh, the fact that the British education system is not fit for the 21st century. But if, before Tony Blair wrote this piece, we've been talking about um, the 21st century education, we've been talking about the fourth industrial revolution and why we need to tweak, change, transform a high school a curriculum uh, to ensure that we can meet the goals of the 21st century. So if you look at what we are doing now, if you look at the STEM schools that are coming up, these are addition to the free senior high school intervention. Now we are creating a better opportunity for young men and women to go to high school and get quality education that they could not get in 2017, ensuring that new senior high schools So, with so this is this video we are watching, this is where? This is Abomosu. So this is what? A Abomosu. This high is school. a senior high school at okay. Abomosu. Community senior high school? No, this is a full boarding senior high school, oh, uh, which is serving, uh, going to serve students from across the country. And this is Nana Dudan Kroku Fuado, free secondary education. Uh, this is um, the, one of the best in the world. Hey, it in looks fact, interesting. The, you, I, 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 I never saw any high school like this in America. We have made countless videos explaining the term STEM education. But in case you have not come across some of these videos, then the term STEM education stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. This combination was introduced in 2001 by scientific administrators at the U.S. National Science Foundation. However, they previously used the acronym SMET when referring to the career field, but later on, it was rearranged 
Village by American biologist called Miss Judith Ramale, who was also the Assistant Director of Education and Human Resources at the U.S. National Science Foundation to form the STEM acronym. So up to now, the STEM focused curriculum has been extended to many countries beyond the United States and now Ghana is doing it and they are doing it better than many countries across the globe. STEM education is becoming very important curriculum in Ghana's education because this type of education creates critical thinkers. It also increases science literacy and again it creates the next generation of innovators that will lead this new world to help sustain Ghana and Africans economy. Merging science, technology, engineering and mathematics also helps to solve the challenges our world is facing today. And Ghana is leading in so many ways. So in this video, Honorable Dr. Yawase Educhum, who is Ghana's education minister, is here to give us the list of some STEM schools Ghana has built so far and why he is taking the STEM education to the next level. But before we listen to Honorable, please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for liking. Now, let's enjoy it together. Tell me, Blair just wrote a piece uh, talking about uh, the fact that the British education system is not fit for the 21st century. But before Tony Blair wrote this piece, we've been talking about um, the 21st century education. We've been talking about the fourth industrial revolution and why we need to tweak, change, transform a high school curriculum uh, to ensure that we can meet the goals of the 21st century. So if you look at what we are doing now, if you look at the STEM schools that are coming up, this is addition to the free senior high school intervention. Now we are creating a better opportunity for young men and women to go to high school and get quality education that they could not get in 2017. High school? So explain that to us. Uh, well, uh, explaining means we have uh, STEM high schools under construction in this country. What is that, STEM high schools? Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You see, in the 21st century, it's no longer the issue of just going to school. What you study was you are in school is so critical. You know, we have always trumpeted in this country the idea of uh, getting 60% of our students to do STEM or science-related courses at the university and 40% doing humanities. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the data, I think we were probably kidding around because how do you get 60% to do um, science or STEM related courses at the university, when at the high school only 12.5% are doing science. Mm -hmm. And especially in a country where if you do not do science... So these school STEM schools you are building, mm. are you attaching it to Wesley Girls, Presex, or, or Kopoku? Or what, what, what is it? Are you there more schools you're adding? You see, new schools have been built. Mm -hmm. Have been built. But one of the things that we also have to understand that in this country, uh, after 50 years, a school may not be performing better. Mm -hmm. We have only 54 high-performing schools in Ghana. Secondary schools. Secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Now with the Tibet added, it's about 1,000 plus senior high schools. Okay, so they put something on the screen. What's this? Can you walk us through this? Yes. This is Bosom Tree Girls. It's a, it's a it's senior a STEM, high? Yeah. It's a STEM it's school? A STEM high school. It's for girls only? Girls only. The first of its kind probably in Africa. School built okay. from scratch just for girls to focus on STEM. So is this a boarding school? Yes, a boarding school. They are focused on engineering, biomedical sciences, computer engineering, computer science. And, and it has, um, it's open uh, this year. And this is one of the Kufuado, uh, President the Kufuado. And this is in Bosom Tree? This in is Bosom Tree. Happens to be my constituency. Yeah. And this is a smaller oh. version. What are they of, excited the about in this photograph? Oh, you see, and they are getting at the attention of the world. Mm -hmm. Different people are coming from all over the world to visit them. So this was a delegation from Belgium that went there and gave them robotic kits and did a workshop for them. And this is uh, what was going on at the time. They were super excited. Oh, I see. This is their library. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new normal in Ghana, that no school opens without a library being built for it. So we don't want to open schools where you don't have library, and you call it a high school. So libraries have been built for all the new schools. So, so this is this video we are watching. This is where? This is Abomosu. So this is what? A Abomosu. This high. is a senior high school at okay. Abomosu. Community senior high school? No, this is a full boarding senior high school, oh, uh, which is serving, uh, going to serve students from across the country. And this is Nana Dudanko Kufuado, free secondary education. Uh, this is 
Um, the, one of the best in the world. Hey, it in looks fact, interesting. The, you, I, 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 I never saw any high school like this in America. This school is it's better a than school. high school. And it's new, Abomosu Secondary School. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Abomosu Secondary Abomosu School. Was STEM. The, who's this? STEM High School. Uh, that happens to be, uh, I think, Municipal Director of Education. And these are the classrooms. Uh, these schools are better uh, built and configured and uh, well structured than most senior high schools around the world. In fact, oh, this is interesting. You don't have these high schools in Singapore, and we but, have them in Ghana. But how but, many, but how many we, are you going to get? How many of these? There are nine of these. And the nine of these are coming. Oh, that's person. the boarding house. That's the bathroom for yeah, the boarding bathrooms, house. Bathrooms, everything. And you see, the good news is that. Why are you making a boarding, by the way? This is the what, dormitory with the beds? The, the, the beds are there, yes. Yeah. So now everything is ready. And, and you, you know, uh, one of the beautiful things is that this school has 12 science labs. This school has more science labs than Presec. 12? Yes. But if you don't operate this school like Presec, right? Uh -huh. After 20 years, it will never come close to Presec. So what are we doing now? What we are doing now is that we are doing school affiliation, as you mentioned earlier. In fact, this school is affiliated with Presec. Mm -hmm. The headmaster there now was assistant headmaster at Presec. So you are taking the assistant headmaster from Presec to go and be headmaster at Abomosu. At Abomosu. To bring the other dear culture. That is it. Because mm -hmm. the, the point of the matter is this. If you do not intentionally build the Odadia culture in this school, this school will never become Oda like Odadia, even though it has better facilities than Odadia. That's true. So the leadership element has to be strengthened. Bring all the best practices at Presec. Even though this is not a mission school, it doesn't hurt if the Presbyterians gives you a chaplain mm -hmm. at this school. Mm -hmm. So everything that makes Presec tech, put them here. And when you're able to do that, in about five to 10 years, you're going to get another presec. So you are no longer going to depend on the 54 schools uh, to meet the needs of the best and brightest in this nation. You have to make a conscious effort to make, uh, ensure that all the new schools are affiliated. We have one school coming at Akrodie in Ahafo. You are affiliated with St. James. Mm -hmm. St. James is one of the top performing schools in this country. In no time, it will become like St. James. So you're putting the pressure on the 54, you're reducing the pressure on the 54 schools. You are duplicating the 54 schools. Yes, yes, are the 54 schools. And then you begin to look at the existing schools that are struggling. Mm -hmm. Won't affiliation work? Aguna Nyakrum Senior High School is one of the top schools in the country now. You know why? No. It's an obscure school, but they got an assistant headmistress from Wesley Girls, who happened to be uh, as, uh, as a, a, a deputy brought that assistant headmistress to uh, uh, Agrani and now it's one of the best schools in the country. So the thing is, is that oh, yes. human beings matter. Matter. Leadership matter. Manfi Methodist girl did not just become Manfi Methodist girl. It took intervention of somebody from a high performance school who go there, went there, brought leadership into focus, and became Manfi Methodist girls. So if you make, don't make a concerted effort in seeding new schools with the DNA of existing high performing schools, you will put up this school. It's one of the best in the world, but the outcomes is not going to be one of the best in the world. You know, there are 48 high schools in Ghana, as I speak with you, um, that are going through transformation. Mm -hmm. And they, um, uh, they are getting support from MasterCard Foundation. Oh, that's and, interesting. And, and before the transformation began, uh, those 48 schools, if your child goes there, you have a 1% or less chance of going to the university. Wow. Those schools have 1% pass rate or less. Wow. Some have 0% pass rate. If you don't make a conscious effort of transforming these schools, you are not going to get the outcome that we need for education to play its rightful role as the most important socioeconomic transformation agent. So bottom line is that at this Ministry of Education, uh, with the full support of the President, we are making secondary education better. And we are actually moving, working backwards to say junior high school should be strengthened so that I can have a true quality six-year secondary education to put Ghana's education on the map, make us competitive like the rest of the world, if not better than, than Vietnam and other nations that are emerging. So yes, access has been improved, no doubt. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to increase the enrollment uh, in senior high schools uh, from 800,000 that we inherited to now 1.3 million. So it's huge improvement in access. But we are now looking at quality. And then from quality, you look at the relevance of the education. That is where STEM comes in. 
And that is where STEAM comes in. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. The Quadraso are, are STEAM High School. The Quadraso is that creative, Quadraso on our screen? Creative Arts. They have buildings like this, but this is still at Bomosu. And the okay. Quadraso School, they have similar facilities. It's Quadraso a, is, a, is a secondary school. Creative Arts, school. yes. Yeah, but I'm, why are you doing creative arts at secondary level? Mm. If you go to Los the, Angeles... The School of Performing Arts at the University of Ghana is, is at the university yeah, level. Yeah. You go to um, Los Angeles. Is that quite as under construction? Yes. Okay. You go to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You have a school for the arts. At the secondary level? At the secondary level. Students audition to get in there. They become the movie actors of the world because of the early... Uh, so you are going uh, to be auditioning yeah. GSS uh, graduates to get in here to get to Abomosu SSE. No, to get uh, to Quadraso. To Quadraso SSE to yes. do creative, creative arts, arts. at Film. SSE level. Oh yeah, films. You see that point. You're going to have studios there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of the line studios. You see, the interesting. We do accounting in high school, right? Yes. So why can't we do a film in high school? Why are we not doing engineering yeah. in high school? In England, they do law in high school. Oh yes. I taught law in high school in Los Angeles. Yeah, For one year, I taught law. Yeah. And it's also exciting. Here, you only get aspects of law if you do management. Management had a component mm -hmm. of law. But the bottom line is that if you look at the Creative Arts High School and the fact that you are going to expose the children at a younger age to the Creative Arts, you know the 10,000-hour rule, which says that mm -hmm. if you focus on something okay. and do it from an early, early 10, age, 10,000 hours. hours, you become an expert in it. People may call you a genius, but it's because you've put in you've so for, much for the same effort. time. So, so, and also, the good news is that you're going to get children who are truly interested in the industry going to the school. Mm -hmm. And consequently, it's not going to be an afterthought that I applied to go to school of administration. I didn't get accepted, and they gave me the school of performing arts, and I went. Yeah, because you are coming to performing arts because you were in Quadraso. So that's your focus. That's your focus. And no, no matter how many A's you get, that's where you want to go. That's where you want to go. Very but interesting. The, but the interesting thing is that you can also decide to go and pursue medicine. Because that school also has 12 labs. And oh, the quite as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't want a situation where the best and brightest men decide not to pursue creative art because they want to be doctors. You see, the best engineers in the world are the ones who can play music. Yes. So you can still go here and decide not to pursue creative arts and be able, by virtue of the courses that you've taken, be able to pursue a course in engineering, medicine, or any other field. But you'll be solid with your foundation, a well-rounded, educated individual, because of your exposure to the arts and exposure to the sciences at the same time. And that is the new philosophy, that you can skill high school students. And in fact, the students from here can secure a job in the movie industry. And the movie industry sometimes yeah. pays more than doctors. Of course. By I mean, far. Not, you not, know, I was telling a, a couple of friends of mine that in Ghana, when we went to school, we only taught three professions. Mm. Lawyer, uh -huh. doctor, mm. engineer. That is it. Later on, we added architect. Yes. So if you cannot be doctor, you cannot be lawyer, you cannot be engineer, you are dumb. And, that, and, that's yeah. how we grew up. So it limits our employment opportunities. And then we spend our time watching Nigerian movies. And we spend our money watching Nigerian movies. That money doesn't come to Ghanaians. It and goes it, to it, Nigeria because they have built an industry. It, it, and in Legon, we laugh at them at theaters. We call them dondology. Because people do not aspire to be there. Very few people aspire to be Clever there. Clever people don't aspire to be no, there no, because they, they are told, go and do medicine. That is it. But in terms of even driving government policy, theater mm. is far more important than medicine. And, it's far and, more and, important and, than law. And you know, one interesting thing is that now with Netflix and all these things, yes. you can produce a movie here to be watched around, around the, world. the world. And the money will come to Ghana. Mm. And also, the reason why we really want to make sure the sciences is integrated into this is the idea of sci-fi movies. Science-based movies. Okay, that so this, in this part of school, you're going to have the science as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound engineers. Oh, yeah, sound engineers will be there. At SSS level. At SSS level. This is a watershed moment for this nation. And another Dan Kukufu is making a serious down payment on how you build a strong, uh, serious creative art industry with the requisite skill set coming through the secondary education system.
wow amazing this is a very good and laudable initiative but one thing i didn't hear was teachers because teachers are also going to play a very important role in this initiative and the entire educational system so honorable next time let us know what you and the government are doing to make teachers happy because if teachers are not happy this whole thing is going nowhere so thank you very much for watching this episode please let us know your thoughts and suggestions inside the comment section below my name is sheriff haruna please subscribe and have a joyful life Macrao. It's another good news for the country as Ghana's president Nana Adudankwa Ekufuadu has announced that Ghana will soon get a tractor assembling plants in the country. Ghana is one of the few African countries where agricultural mechanization has recently undergone rapid utilization. Tractors used for plowing and maize shelling have been widely adopted even among small farmers. In Ghana, about 52% of the employed labor force are engaged in agriculture. It is also an important contributor to Ghana's export earnings, making this plant a very vital project and an important employment avenue for a lot of trained agricultural engineers in the country. So, stick to this video to the end as we look at this new assembly plant introduction in Ghana and all the information surrounding its announcement. Before we begin as always, I would appreciate a like on this video and subscribe to this channel. Let's get right into it. A strategic alliance has been established between Tias to West Africa and Heng Yang Hengcho Agricultural Mechanization Manufacturing Manufacturing Company Limited, a manufacturer of agricultural tractors with headquarters in China in order to establish a tractor manufacturing factory known as Sea Tractor in Ghana with the purpose of manufacturing made in Ghana agricultural tractors. This move is an agricultural industrialization drive to spare the growth in the Ghanaian agricultural sector through the introduction of improved and advanced machinery for agricultural production. Again, agriculture is a major source of income for most of the Ghanaian populace, but over the last decade, the size of the agricultural sector in Ghana has reduced. In 2009, Ghana's agricultural sector contributed to 1.8% of the country's GDP, and in 2019, it reduced to 17.32%. In 2021, however, which is just last year, agriculture contributed to 19.71% to the country's GDP. So, comparing 2019 and 2020, there was an increase and according to the president, Ghana saw an increase in food output in 2021 because of the planting for food and job initiatives they introduced in 2017 which led to the country seeing an increase in food output in 2021 but the truth is that the country's agricultural sector now has been reduced drastically as compared to the last decade this is because most farmers in africa are using the traditional way of farming but ghana is changing that every first friday of the month of december is marked as an official farmers day celebration so this year's was Ghana's 38th Farmers Day celebration and the theme was accelerating agricultural development through value addition, meaning factories in Ghana are about to work in 2023 because they are expected to add value to everything farmers are going to produce. So the president of Ghana took advantage of this year's Farmers Day celebration to announce to Ghanaians some modernized measures taken by the government and this includes a greenhouse farm training school, irrigation for all year round farming, a warehouse for food storage and mechanized agriculture. This will come with the establishment of the tractor assembling plants in the country. To accelerate the process of agricultural modernization, my government through various bilateral agreements as important assaults, agricultural machinery tractors, power tillers, planters, freshers, combined harvesters and handheld equipment for smallholder farmers and a value of 67 million US dollars. These farm equipment and machinery are being sold in subsidized ways to farmers and other investors currently. I'm happy to report the processes have been concluded towards the establishment of a tractor assembling plant in Ghana. This will go a long way to reduce the cost of practice, improve access to character parts and create jobs, the president expressed. The Ghanaian government secured a loan of $24.9 million from the Indian Axim Bank that will be used for the construction of the assembly plant. The engineering procurement and construction contract with the completion date is set within 18 months. In 2024, the factory envisions the production 
of about 4,500 made in Ghana tractors, 600 backhoe holders, 6,000 decks, harrows, and plows, and 3,000 power tillers are expected to be assembled in Ghana annually, and the products also exported to neighboring African countries. This will mean that Ghana will be one of the largest exporters of agricultural tractors in Africa, with the highest returns to build the local economy and dominate the international market in terms of agricultural machinery production. Detailing the socio-economic advantages of this partnership, the two parties pointed out that the initiative will lead to the creation of employment opportunities, boost agricultural production, serve as a platform to train young professionals and strengthen the agricultural value chain. According to Tia's group and Hinchu, young Ghanaian professionals in the engineering field would be taken through a series of training on tractor manufacturing in China and this is expected to provide hands-on practical training for young professionals with the ultimate aim of providing jobs for teaming youths. This is however part of the localization agenda TIAS Group is set to achieve in the West African sub-region in some few years to come. The footprint is beginning in Ghana, the headquarters of the TIAS West African Company Limited. Delivering a short statement before the signing, Honorable Ken Ofoyata, the Minister for Finance, said it will also reduce the importation of goods from foreign countries, which in the long run would help reduce pressure on the major trading foreign currencies. Ultimately, the project is expected to significantly transform Ghana's agricultural sector, create jobs, raise incomes, reduce malnutrition, and help accelerate economic growth, he said. Any updates on this initiative and directive would be given out on this channel. If you like content like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Also, check out this video next on this amazing developmental project in Ghana that will also amaze you. Thank you and on to the next video. Be sure to check this video out. This is the Akunfi Fruit and Juices Factory, another example of government determination to promote the industrial transformation of Ghana, partnering the private sector to grow an industrialized nation. What we process here is uh, fruit juice, but with pineapple as a base. We chose pineapple because um, pineapple is a crop that grows all year round. So if we want to do fruit juice and work all year round and then bring hope to the people, we need to do pineapple. But we're not doing just pineapple, we're doing pineapple with um, mixed with ginger, pineapple, mixed with citrus um, juice, etc. This is the first factory to be commissioned by President Tekufuado to kickstart the One District, One Factory agenda, an initiative designed to transform the industrial landscape of the country and build the capacities of local entrepreneurs and existing enterprises to produce high-quality products and services for both local and foreign markets. It was a day that the President admonished us to come up with a project that is going to be of a national nature to lift uh, the people of Ekumfi out of the poverty and also to uh, put the name of, of Ekumfi up. With 1,000 acres of pineapple under cultivation, employing about 475 outgrowers, the factory has created direct employment opportunities for over 550 people, including engineers, food scientists, market professionals, accountants and technicians. We are testimony to this fact that the idea that Nanado uh, initiated and is championing is actually bringing a transformation in the life of people. We've created a lot of jobs in the area. Um, go to our farms alone. So far, we have over 400 people on our farms as we speak. In addition, more than 1,000 indirect job opportunities in the Kumfi and other adjoining districts have been created. In the time past, all they did was to just produce the pineapple. The factory has come for them so that they can just grow their pineapple and send it to the factory. They get their revenue 
So it's been something beneficial to the people of Ekufi. This has brought a lot of excitement to the district. As we speak, um, there are other companies approaching us to use our byproduct for their own uh, product and it's going to happen in this district. So we're expecting about three to four other factories being born out of our factory here and all of these to give job to the people of Ekumfi. After a thorough selection process on the farm, the fruits are carted to the, the washing pool. At that point, the fruits go through the water therapy. From there, it goes through the conveyor, which carries it from the pool into the washing line, after which they are carried into the, the crusher and separator. Then the pulp that is captured goes into the presser for the pressing of the juice. Once they come in here, and we want to do, for example, pineapple and ginger, that is pine ginger, the ginger comes in here into the mixing tanks for a mixture. A special machine called the homogenizer that bonds the components coming in the juice such that if it stands for a long time, there is no separation. From there, they run straight into the, the pasteurizer. Basically, what the pasteurizer does is to run it up at a very high degree and drops it to a chilling level and then matches it straight into the, the filling line. So from these lines, these products now become the eco juice, the choicest eco juice that um, we so cherish. As a result of this factory, the Ekumfi district has become an exporter of processed pineapple juice in Ghana, creating employment particularly for the youth in rural communities and therefore reducing rural urban migration. From the coastlands in the south to the ridges of the highlands in the east, through the midland forest to the western farmlands, and up to the hot and dry lands in the north, there are varying needs for infrastructure. From a convenient complex road to a simple but crucial factory to a calm but great alternative system. These needs do not count for luxury despite their enormity and providing them certainly isn't a political stunt. To this government, these infrastructural projects
109 kilometers. To ensure wider and proportionate access, the government has extended electricity to over 2,700 communities with additional extensions ongoing in 628 different communities. The government is continuously installing
whole time we get fresh vegetables and you don't hear people actually fighting over water and you don't also hear people going around saying Fulanis have come to their farms to drink their water and taking eating their food stuff and everything because we have water in abundance from mankuma the team moved to mandari there is a cashew plantation next to this dam the owner of the cashew plantation says all he needs now is a pumping machine to make maximum use of the dam to produce the cashew in commercial quantities. Our team noticed that the water level in this dam had dropped significantly, but the residents of the community explained that it was the result of overspillage. We have a, a 10 completed and we are now actually waiting for another group. For now, we are doing community base. Wherever we see a cluster of communities, we put one for everyone to enjoy. The One Village, One Dam initiative is not only providing timely water for farming and cattle rearing, it is also providing alternative livelihood for farmers who decide to down their tools completely during the dry season. Because of this, the government has thoughtfully started the construction of over 500 dams and dugouts like this one here.
over seven. given power truly belongs. What is going on YouTube family and welcome to another video and as part of the initiative of our channel that's spreading Ghana, spreading Africa to the world, I have a really really exciting video for you all showing how Ghana's railway is transforming the nation and it is a project that has made noise within the nation as well as getting insight in from international audiences just for the massive quantity and the sheer project that is being undertaken. So if you guys have been following this channel for a very long time, you know around about 2018 I actually covered this topic of them going to be starting to begin building this railway and putting plans in place. So to already see parts of the railway of this absolutely mega mega project in Ghana already being finished and plans that have been put together all the way until the late 2030s is really, really amazing and today we're going to dive into it. So talking about transforming Ghana's railway network, they say in, in many developing countries growth relies on cross-border trade aided by robust logistics, logistical infrastructure, which is extremely, extremely true. So now the master plan of this railway is going to consist of 3,800 kilometers of railway networks. This will be constructed over a period of 15 years between the years 2020 and 2035, making it easier, cheaper and safer to travel within Ghana. The re revamped railway network provides a clean alternative to road-based travel and freight transport in private cars and a lot of trucks. So one of the main reasons why the rehabilitation of the Western Line was done, which stretched 340 kilometers from the port of Tekordi to Kamasi. Now it was prioritized obviously because of the rich natural resources available within the country and available within the region. These are namely your cacao, your bauxite and your manganese. These are the three massive exporters that Ghana is responsible for. Now Tekordi is the main export line and as such the western line is crucial for further developing Ghana's export industry but only 66 kilometers is currently operational. The main reasons why Ghana is doing this is because shorter commuting times, providing better access to markets and minimizing road traffic accidents will therefore be hugely beneficial to the country and why this project is so important. A very, very interesting study that was done, they showed that in the year of 2020, between the months of January to October, 20,100 road traffic accidents were recorded in Ghana involving 20,500 vehicles. Now the statistics from the National Road Safety Authority and the Accident Network Law Group 
indicates that the road traffic accident costs, what it costs the West African nation of Ghana every single year is 1.6% of its annual GDP. This roughly translates over to 165 million US dollars, which is absolutely massive and you can completely understand why they are now putting so much money into developing such a robust and such a transformative railway network. So now, if we have a look at this map that is now showing on the screen, you can see that it's broken up into four different phases. Phase one is the orange that has already been done. Phase two is the light blue that you can see is from a car near the Cape Coast and it's going all the way up into the northern regions of Ghana, all the way up into the border. Now, phase three that will be completed by 2033, you can see in the dark blue, this one I'm the most excited about. This is gonna run along the whole coast of Ghana. So you can literally go from the east all the way to the west, the west all the way to the east and explore all the coastal cities, which is something that I've been longing to do and something that I'm very, very excited about. And then phase four to co be completed by 2036 will tie everything together. And this is in the green phase. And you can see Ghana will turn into a transformational hub for transport, for passengers, and making it so much easier to be able to explore Ghana, especially that Ghana has such a huge touristic uh, avenue where lots of people are coming to visit for tourism regions. This will just boost it dramatically. So now when talking about the key parts of the project, the key part of developing the railway network from Takoridi Port up into the Honey Valley, which is a 102 kilometer track, forming a core element of the wider Western line developing development running from the port of Kamazi with branches that route into Owasu. Now this is also designated to carry both freight and passengers with a maximum speed of 120 kilometers per hour. And if anyone knows the traffic, in that region can get absolutely crazy. So the fact that you can rather be traveling at 120 kilometers of bar, uh, per hour in a train instead of having to wait in that traffic is absolutely mental and really, really exciting. And when the finance minister of the Republic of Ghana commented on this project, he said this project is part of Ghana's railway infrastructure plan and has been earmarked for implementation by the government and will be the single biggest railway investment by the country post independence. So the future planning and everything is absolutely incredible to see. As well as he said, the completion of this line will boost economic activity along the corridor and will reduce costs and time of transporting goods and passengers between two ends. So just looking at this, looking at seeing the video, how much development has happened, how much they have finished is very, very exciting. I'm very, very proud of Ghana and proud to call it home with how much they are developing and everything that is getting put back into the country to benefit the people. So with that being said, I wanna conclude this video. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and if you're not already a part of the family, smash that subscribe button so we can grow together, get better together and improve little by little each and every single day while spreading Ghana, while spreading Africa and whilst changing the narrative to the world. If you want any more videos that you want me to touch on, let me know in the comment section below and we'll for sure do that for all of you.